Okay, uh, I haven't made any videos for a while, but uh, there's a big announcement that uh, kind of caught myself and uh, Steve Patterson, who some of you hopefully know, but uh, all of you will know by the end of this video, by, it caught us both by surprise. Amazon put our book on pre-sale uh, yesterday, and I don't think either of us were expecting they, they kind of did that uh, off guard, but I wanted to introduce everybody to Steve and his role in Bitcoin and his role in, in, in all this, because uh, this book is really making some waves out there. And uh, Steve, why don't you uh, introduce yourself if you don't mind? Sure. So um, I'm Steve Patterson. I've been involved in Bitcoin for some time. Some time meaning a decade plus, I, I, I believe. So. Yes. Uh, so I learned about Bitcoin at Mises University. I think it was 2011 or 2010. I remember the price of Bitcoin was just under a dollar um, when I heard about it. And um, like a good economic thinker, I was like, nah, I'm not going to buy any. And so uh, I saw it go up to $10. And then my wife, Julia, was like, uh, you know, you should, she heard about two. She's like, you should look at this Bitcoin thing. And I thought, well, I mean, I just saw the price. It's a dollar. I'm not going to get in with $10. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's crazy. So that, that was my beginning uh, of Bitcoin, getting late to the, the to the bandwagon when I could have gotten in earlier. But um, in terms of like professional um, interaction and my career in Bitcoin, um, I started in 2013, I think, was the first thing I had produced publicly. Um, I was working at the Foundation for Economic Education at the time, and I made their first um, animated video on Bitcoin that was sort of explaining it from the monetary side of things. Um, that did pretty well. And then um, I wrote, I was writing some articles for uh, Bitcoin Magazine, I think 2014, and then wrote um, first book on Bitcoin here, this little uh, introduction to Bitcoin called What's the Big Deal at Bitcoin, uh, back at the end of 2014. Because I was getting a bunch of people that were asking, what's this Bitcoin thing? You know, please tell me about it. So this is like a teeny tiny little book, uh, an introduction, but it seemed to do pretty well. Um, I had some close family members that have also been involved very closely in the uh, cryptocurrency world for many years, really going back since uh, 2013, 2014. So I've been close to it for a long time. Um, and then I saw what happened with uh, what we, you and I are calling the hijacking of Bitcoin over a period of several years. And, um, unfortunately, uh, I, I think the, the bad guys won, at least in the short run. And that was really burdensome and bothering uh, me. I know it's been bothering you for many years and nobody had written the story that I thought sh had to be written about what the heck happened to Bitcoin. Um, and so this was just a perfect collaboration between you and me where, you know, I, I thought you were very, uh, you got a good, deep understanding of Bitcoin back in the day. You're very influential in helping me form my own um, understanding of what Bitcoin is, what it could be, how it should operate. And so um, this was just a great collaboration where the the story that you and I um, have told in this book, I think it overlaps massively. I don't think we really disagree on much, but to my knowledge, nobody else has shared this perspective. Which is kind of weird because you know you've obviously been an insider and a, and a you know, somebody been deeply involved in the industry forever. This book, I think, is fair to say, presents a perspective that really was among the top entrepreneurs in the industry, kind of the the, the perspective out there. If you were gonna if you're gonna talk to like let's say the CEO of BitPay at the time, who was quoted multiple times in the book, he that he, uh, Stephen Pear shared this perspective. This is not just like, uh, this is, you know, hijacking Bitcoin is not just Roger Veer's idiosyncratic perspective. We're just kind of sharing the story of what was the dominant. The mainstream view at the time and until the censorship began that we went over in the book as well. So exactly. it was the mainstream view and then the censorship started, uh, and then the propaganda started and the demonization started and the attack started. And then this story, despite being really the mainstream view, just, it was never told. So what, a, this is a great opportunity now to tell the story for everybody. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a bit of my background and, and, uh, how I got involved with it. And, and the, I, you know, I'm, I'm tooting our own horn here a bit, but the book is fantastic. I don't think anybody can, can possibly read the book and not come away at the very least thinking, Hmm maybe there was a part of Bitcoin that I hadn't considered before. And uh, I think it'll change a lot of minds and hearts uh, because this book really lays it out so clearly. And it's basically impossible to refute at that point that Bitcoin was hijacked. Yeah. And and and, and uh, there's a line in the book uh, somewhere where it says, if you can disagree uh, with the conclusion that, you know, Bitcoin is um, 
or, or let's say Bitcoin Cash, you think is like, like maybe if you don't think that's the best alternative. I really, truly don't think that somebody can read this book honestly and think to themselves walking away, okay, Bitcoin BTC really is decentralized. It's really outside of the control of humans. It's some, it's like some part of nature. It's like some, some planet of the laws of physics. It's just out there and nobody can control it. I truly do not believe it's possible to read this book and walk away with that conclusion as much as it would be awesome for that to be true. It'd be great if the stories that they told about BTC Bitcoin were true uh, or about the lightning network. I wish they were true, but they're not just factually speaking. You know, there, there are more than 280 citations in this book. It's extremely well, uh, sourced and cited. And I, I think the conclusion is clear that they absolutely did fundamentally redesign Bitcoin into a different project. Maybe you think it's a great redesign, but they really did redesign the thing. You just gotta, you just gotta admit that the situation we find. And that was exactly what I said to another uh, BTC Max analyst that was contacting me earlier today. I said, like, you can say all day long that you think that the current version of Bitcoin is better than the previous version, that you're entitled to your opinion. Maybe it's true, but you cannot dispute the fact or because the facts are on the side that Bitcoin project itself was hijacked and transformed into something that's totally different than what it was originally and what made so many people excited about it originally, because all the facts are right there in the book. I completely agree with you. And I think I might be speaking a bit too fast here, but I think think we might get some admissions of this now from the BTC Max lists. I think the time, enough time has passed where they might be able to say, okay, yeah, we did actually kind of fundamentally change the design. And yeah, you got us. And, and all of those promises stretch you back to like 2013, 2014, about second layers and lightning networks, but was going to save us just hold on a little bit longer. And we're going to be rescued with this lightning is so amazing. I think they're going to admit if I've seen already some people start to admit, okay, lightning actually was not the panacea that we were promised. And we don't really, right now, we don't really have a backup. <laughs> so if lightning doesn't get, if, if lightning doesn't fix the problems with BTC Bitcoin, uh, that is, uh, the, uh, there isn't plan B. Well, and I have seen we've already seen the market's plan B, which is a thousand and one different altcoins, right? There's thousands yeah. and thousands, maybe tens of thousands of different altcoins at this point. And, Lots of them are, are, are getting used, whether it's, uh, you know, Solana or Avalanche or Ethereum or, you know, right on down the list there. So, yeah. And I, I've actually had, when I was uh, sharing the earlier versions with different people who had more technical background, um, and also many of them are like OG Bitcoiners who followed uh, this as, as it was happening. I had multiple people tell me, there's a chapter here, chapter nine on the Lightning Network. I had multiple people tell me that walking through the concepts of the lightning network, it becomes clearer and clearer that this is a, it's sort of absurd. It's, a, it's, it's intrinsically, um, broken for scaling for lightning. And let me tell you exactly why I know people might disagree with that, but there's, there's actually, there's multiple systemic problems with the lightning network. Well, one of them, it's actually shocking that nobody is working on this and there's almost nothing that can be done about this, even in principle, that a lightning network requires multiple on-chain transactions in order to use. So if you have tiny blocks on layer one, it's there is no way to avoid having high transaction fees even to use the Lightning Network. So it might cost $5, $10, $50 just to connect to the Lightning Network. Well, you, you've heard the maximum, yeah, the maximum solution to that is just to use a custodial platform and let PayPal hold your money for you. And they've missed the entire, the entire, you know, almost the entire point of Bitcoin there. So. Right, but that's not the, that's really not the lightning network. That's no, the it's not. Yeah, in terms, right, in terms it's a bait and switch. There is no proposed solution to this self-evident, obvious problem of what do you do when the on-chain transaction fees are high because you have small blocks. They don't have a solution to that. That that itself is a deal breaker among several other deal breakers. But I, anyway, I brought that up to say, I, I had several people make note of chapter nine and say, you know, you walk through the concepts and it's just so obvious. This is like a failed. Uh, a project lightning network is a failure. It's a, it's a toy. It's a science project that never took off. It's not going to succeed. And at some point there's a, there's a quote in there. I think it's from Rick Albinga who says, you know, at some point this will be, um, put by the wayside. It'll be recognized as a failed project. It's not, you know, you're going to tinker around with it. And at some point people are going to put it on the shelf and say, I didn't. Looks like his predictions are coming, coming true, right? As we, uh, as we speak. 
And uh, for people that want to hear all the additional details there, like buy the book. It's available right now on Amazon today. You can go and buy it. Uh, the it, the shipping starts in uh, April 5th. Uh, and we'll have the audio book. We'll have the physical book and uh, and the ebook as well. So all of that. Thank you. Like, I really want to give a lot of credit to Steve, though, too. He's the one who really did all the heavy lifting with this, dealt with all the publishers, dealt with, the, you know, everything, the creation of all these, uh, you know, three different formats. Like, really, really thank you, uh, Steve, and, and really did a wonderful, wonderful job uh, there. I'm uh, proud to have my name on the cover there and every word I uh, in the book I can stand behind. So you really did an excellent job with that, Steve. Thank you. Well, thank you, Roger. I appreciate that. And uh, it really is. I know I told you this before, but it really has been an honor to work with you to get this very important story out there. I mean, I think it's possible we might look back in 20 years time and say, you know, we'll look over on the course of what has happened to Bitcoin. And it, there's a possibility that this story is going to be um, appreciated in a way that I'm sure it won't be in the short run, because we're going <laughs> to we're going to make a lot of people angry with this book here in the short run. But at the long run, I think we've done something that will stand yeah, and it's pretty fun to see. It's all it's been out one day. It's already the number one selling book uh, in digital currencies. Uh, so we're number one. Safety novice is a Bitcoin standard, which uh, we is filled with flaws. Is number two, but uh, I guess he doesn't want the flaws to be pointed out to him because he had preemptively blocked me on Twitter long ago. So <laughs> yeah, I've been blocked for a while too. So yeah. Well, uh, anyhow, if you're interested in this topic, uh, please uh, go ahead and buy the book. It's right there on Amazon. Just search for hijacking Bitcoin. And it'll be there in every Amazon around the world. And uh, you can visit uh, hijackingbitcoin.com uh, as well. And uh, anything else you want to add, Steve? No, if you're interested uh, in some of my other work, I don't just do Bitcoin stuff. I'm an independent researcher on a whole bunch of different topics. Go to my website, steve-patterson.com, that people might be interested in. Well. All right, there you have it. So thank you, everyone. And uh, I've missed you guys. I'm glad to be back uh, doing some active stuff in the space. So see everyone soon.